<laughs> hey everybody, it's Patty Jobrovolsky. Oh my God. I have like, honestly, one of my favorite people in the whole world here, Aww. Sonny Brown. I mean, you are like my superstar friend and yeah, I just we're... think, wow. We I have get a mutual to talk admiration to you today. Yeah. I know, but you know, it goes both ways. Like every time I, like you've saved my life many occasions. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's a nice thing to say. But um, I just want to first start by saying, okay, uh, I'm going to say that this podcast with Sunny Brown is going to be really different and unique because she is oh. different and unique. And it's not a traditional interview thing. I'm hoping yeah. that you're just going to share and we're going to talk about some deep stuff here yeah. about change because you cool. are a master of change and you also fall into the slippery slope and you get caught down there in the pit. And oh, I want you sure. to talk about um, some of the things that have brought you to life. So anyway, thank you That's so much awesome. for, for coming on the show and and doing the podcast. I appreciate I love it. The, I love the setup and the framing and I appreciate being seen. What I love about you, Patty, is you always see me and that means a lot yeah. to me and to most people, but especially to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you are, you're just so amazing. And so tell yeah. us if you would, I mean, I met you because you called and uh, we're both visualizers, right? Yeah. That's what we're known as in the right. world. Yeah. But um, you couldn't go and do something. And you asked me, would I go in your stead? And I learned how so we bonded. Many, I know. And now we totally bonded over that. Now we now we're, you know, whoosh, now we're like glue together. Yeah, we're like, I think we were designed to be together over yeah. you know, space and time. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <Yeah>. Definitely. <laughs> all right. So, but tell everybody else who doesn't know who you are and all that, um, tell them a little of your story, um, sure. you know, who you were yeah, <laughs> and who right. you are now. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, I mean, I think entrepreneur, there's a, a bunch of words I could use to describe myself. And I think modern people are very multifaceted and we get to be that now. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not unique in that regard, but like, I think there's an entrepreneur in there. There's a, a writer, there's a, a visual thinker and a doodler. There's a facilitator, there's a, a speaker, you know, and really there's a book coach, you know? So yeah. In a way I've embraced and I just dive into different disciplines and see what makes itself available to me, you know? Yes. And then when it is available, you jump on it now. Right. Um, so, but you were known as kind of Dr. Doodle. That's how mm -hmm. you were known. You were on the news and mm -hmm. people would call you when they thought doodling was, remember when sketch noting became this big thing and then they would call yeah. you all the time. Can we have all Sonny Brown get on the NBC please and CNN, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, so that was a big part of your personality. Yeah. And you had a very successful Journey. business in mm -hmm. Austin, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For 15 years, I've been an entrepreneur for 15 years and, um, part of that ended up having a little PR component and a um, sort of a very public presence, definitely, but that wasn't intentional. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I've pivoted the business many times because I, I like to respond to what's needed and try to be available for what's needed and useful. I think that's the change agent in me is like, yes. I'm not a fixed entity, you know? Very well, um, you don't feel like you have to stay in a particular role. That's what you're talking exactly. about. It's yeah. like when you feel like you need to change or the public public, right? Yeah. The people that you're mm -hmm. engaging with need something mm -hmm. else. Then you provide something else. Yes. Right. That's right. And, or you figure yeah. out what you need to know to do it. Right. Yes. And actually as a really important uh, aspect of myself that I didn't mention is the fact that I'm a Zen student and really like you and I have this shared history of, of really deep dives into psychotherapeutic practices. So that's all that always informs everything I do. And I think that Zen in a way is foundational to the capacity to pivot for me. I think being a creative helps you pivot, but the pr Zen practice actually teaches you how to do that also. Yes. So, so yeah, oh, we're I complex, love that. We're I, complex we, people, Patty. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, uh, but what's true is you're talking about this, this level of spirituality that mm -hmm. you have honed and grown into and learned from as a daily practice, a which refuge. allows yeah. you to pivot into this other space and totally, and Sometimes it's not always pretty. No, where you it's are often and what not you pretty. discover, right? Oh no, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I think I'm the queen of messy processes. You know, I am. I embarrass myself regularly uh, 
by needing to take time for mental health and needing to take time for emotional stability and stuff like that. Like, I don't, I can't function unless that's a part of the recipe of my life. And that is, is that embarrassing? No, but it's just true about me. And I sometimes envy people that for whom they just wake up kind of stable. <laughs> I'm like, what's your secret? Like, you know, they, but, that's but that um, eight hour sleep thing, you know, that's what yeah, and say, I'm, right. I'm really good at sleeping. Yeah. I'm very good at that. But I also think that, uh, yeah, I think that I have a complex trauma history. I think I have a very creative brain, partly as yeah. a result of that conditioning. And I think I had a naturally creative brain and I think modern life is fucking nuts. And I also think that, so for me, spiritual practice is a refuge and it's a requirement and mental health breaks, I guess today's mental national mental health day. Yeah. So those, I think they're essential for most people. They just don't give themselves permission to take them, you know? Yeah. But, Mm -hmm. um, and so when, when you decided to pivot, because mm-hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, you decided you wanted to stop being known as Dr. Doodle and mm-hmm. you wanted That's to right. do something else. So totally. say a little bit about that. And then what happened after that and after that? Because you've had a couple of iterations, but That's um, right. when, when, and ta- if you can speak about mm-hmm. it from the perspective of what gave you the clue or the nudge that you needed to shift. And yeah. how did you navigate that? Because most yeah. of us, we, we try tough. to push down that tip that's coming in about pivot, it's too, and we it's just want to keep going. We want to go, go, keep going, go, go, go. Right. Yeah. We want to stay where it's safe and familiar and that's understandable. Um, yes. But, but sometimes you're summoned and you just don't, you can deny the call as much as you'd like, but I'm not really one to deny the call. I'm, I'm quite the opposite. I step in, you know, consistently over and over. And I think that's partly just a resilience history. Um, and also I, the, the deliciousness of the reward when you do lean into uncertainty for me has consistently proven itself over, over and over and over. So my fear factor of uncertainty is lower than I think a lot of people's. Um, like I'm willing, I'm willing to take risks because I know there's reward and you, you can't know that unless you step in, that's the whole trick. (laughs) Like like somebody can tell you all day long that something will change in your life that will be valuable, but you have to experientially understand that. And so like going back to your actual question, yeah, I was known for being the doodle lady and Dr. Doodle and the doodle (laughs) revolutionary and all that stuff, which again was like, just to, like, I, I look back and laugh at my life. I'm like, what the hell, you know, well, like it wasn't planned, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but I did see a, a, I did see a need there in the market in terms of visual, like permission to express ourselves visually in a meaningful way in business. So I just took that opportunity, but yeah, I mean, I, over time, I said everything I needed to say about that. Like I wrote a couple books and I did a ton of keynotes, as you know, and uh, we facilitated and like together and gave storming was a big part of that and eventually uh, the truth of the matter was that that was one layer of my existence and there was another undercurrent of a deep zen practice and deep spiritual exploration and deep training in psychotherapy yeah your that, deep self-design yeah and so that necessarily evolved but i wanted to take back i wanted to take with me what i all those skills i had cultivated so the intention was to open the center for deep self-design um, and using all and those that was the plan. That, that was, was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I invested Patty. You, I, I, I was going to say like the logo is beautiful. Oh, I was all just, in. I mean, you had stuff, you had collateral, you know, you oh, had man, all I had the, real estate <laughs> I know, in downtown I know. Austin. I had furniture, yes, yes. I had a website, I had yeah. teachers, workshops ready. <laughs> I mean, it was ready. I was signed up to come and do one of the workshops. I yes. remember. Yeah. yeah I so, remember too. You know, that, yeah. that's, um, that's part of it. Like, right. I love what you said is that you mm-hmm. knew that you had run this course. Right. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so that book, one of the books she wrote, one of the, these two are two of my favorite books. Game storming is one. She wrote it with your, um, the writing partner. I can't remember his name right now. Dave, Dave Gray. Gray, James McAnuffo. Yeah. Yeah. Dave Gray. And then the, Mm -hmm. um, the other one was doodle revolution. So, uh, if you are a live illustrator and you're listening and you don't have those books in your bookshelf, definitely get them because one doodle revolution, you will learn how smart Sonny Brown is because (laughs) honestly, the truth is 
Like she doesn't just write a book. Like I would say, I write these books and boom, you know, I get them out and I do the research. Yeah. But yeah, you, you are book. like, you're like the you glom onto the thing and then you figure out what it works and then yeah. you put it together. And her writing is beautiful. Aww. It's so articulate. It really Aww. paints a perfect picture and it's That's got weird. all the data you need to know about why you want to draw a picture. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just giving a little plug for your books because but see that's amazing. also so sweet because you see me right so like yeah, I yeah. really I just soak that in I'm like God I love that you really recognize what I'm good at and you also know things I'm terrible at and that <laughs> and that's fine too I, but, I don't I don't remember that part I just erase <laughs> that out of my memory whatever <laughs> so awesome. all right so you created deep deep self design mm -hmm. and and then you were going to host a whole series of workshops and That's then COVID right. hit. COVID n nailed us to the ground. Like the first workshop was people were registered for it. It was March 26th of 2020. That was the first workshop. Unbelievable. And yeah. basically South by Southwest got canceled you yeah. know, interact. I mean, that's a huge, that's like a small city shutting itself down. So yeah. at that point we all knew like, oh, this is real. Like yeah. this is real. Yeah. And so everything collapsed at that point, like all the workshops and the real estate, I converted it back into Airbnbs. Um, you know, we alerted all the people not to fly. They weren't going to, we gave everybody their money back. Like all the yeah, furniture yeah, is in yeah. cellophane in the basement. <laughs> I mean, it was like unreal. It was oh unbelievable, yeah, but I'm yeah, very yeah. glad that didn't happen for a hundred yes. reasons. I'm really yeah, glad. Say why, say why? Because it wasn't my path actually. Right. And um, I, I wanted it to be. I thought it should be. I was there. I was close. It was close. Right. But it wasn't the, the thing. And I could tell, uh, well, from the fact that it just abruptly shut down. So the universe was, I mean, like the timing, you know what I mean? It was just, you know, the, the universal signal was like, and that's a no. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Uh, the, I like that. But the other thing is many people opened restaurants and stuff like that Aww. during their time and they got shut down, but they yeah. reopened. So mm -hmm. here's the tip here yeah. is that, yes, it might get shut down and it might get sidelined. But That's if right. you know it's your true calling, you're not going to question it. It'll be that. okay. That's It'll right. be fine. You'll be like, whatever. Um, yeah. But if it is not your true calling, you will know immediately. Mm -hmm. You'll be like, yeah, those things aren't happening. You know, I'm going to do yeah. something else, right? That's right. Because I didn't spend it. And see, this is the pivot piece and the change, welcoming of change piece. I did not spill milk and cry about that. I really didn't. I was like, okay, and now what? And like, that's what Zen teaches. That's what improv teaches. Yep. That's what facilitation teaches. And so I, I, you know, I acknowledged the circumstances. I didn't deny it. It wasn't a denial thing. It was yep. just, okay, this is not to be at this time. So what right. next, what now? And I always have gratitude for what, for what I do have. And so, yep. um, that also has cultivated through practice. It's not like I was <laughs> had a good attitude my whole life. You know what I mean? Um, I do. I do. I so do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of yeah. course you do. And so I, um, I eventually started just, you know, keeping my eyes open. I keep the antenna open and I just sort of pay attention and intuitively explore and instinctively ask questions. And so, yeah, yeah. I have, and you know, I'm a pragmatist. And so I'm always going to, I'm not a whimsical sort of dreamer in a way, like I'm a weird blend of dreamer and pragmatist. So I was just, you know, keep my Meaning that she really likes to make money. That's another yeah, piece like, of I don't it, hate money. she's not going to like, uh, no. you know, just go off and then donate her services and sit on the top <laughs> of a mountain and pra do a practice up there right. and blah, blah, blah. But that's that right. might be fun, but it, that's not going to be what you do because you like to be out in the world. You like engaging with people. You like going yeah. home and you like having a paycheck come in. Yeah. And it's required. Terms. It's for, for me, it's required. And like, I tell people often, like I am a trailer park latchkey kid. I'm not yeah. from wealth. I don't, my family has nothing. They've given me nothing except for a lot of tragedy and they did not financially support me since from 17 onward. So there's no part of me that's like yeah. flippant about money, yes. but I'm also, but I also, it's not my driving compass by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. I, yeah. and I, um, I can live minimally when I need to, and I can be, um, profligate, uh, expense, profligately expensive in a moment. If I get yep. a big paycheck to, to celebrate something. So my relationship with money is not real fraught, you yeah. know, yeah. that's good. And, that's and fantastic. Also, 
Yeah. Well, I want to say to the women listening to that, uh, women undervalue constantly. I know this is a stereotype. I get it. I'm I, like, I'm willing to be challenged on that, but historically we undervalue and currently we do. And I did not also have that problem I, out of the gate. I was like, no. this is my time. This is how much it costs. And I'm not going to apologize for it. And yeah. that's, and that's also part of being a survivor, but anyway, yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's fantastic. So, so deep self-design didn't happen. And <laughs> then then you decided that you were going to learn how to be a book coach. <laughs> I know. And I still want to so deeply. I, I have, did you, I, you did the training for it though, right? I, yeah. I paid for the training. It's my, I'll give a shout out to Jenny Nash. It's her, it's called author accelerator. Oh, I do. Nash, I'm, she's fantastic. She's yeah. incredible. She, yeah. she was my book coach um, in the oh, past. Wow. Yeah. But, and I have a book client actually that I'm working with on a trilogy that is a phenomenal trilogy, but so, you know, it's still, there's a parallel track there, but I got derailed by this uh, doodler in residence thing. But, um, I, I do plan to return to book coaching and writing as soon as conceivably possible because yes, because you love it. That's what's true. I you do. know, if, like, um, if you follow, um, Sunny Brown on Instagram, you'll see that she has in the past posted these pictures of an entire wall filled with books that are stacked <laughs> up waiting to be read, you <laughs> know, I because do. you're an obsessive book buyer. You don't Obsessed. like get it on audible and thing, you know, oh. you like the book in hand and then you marker it up and you do all the yes. stuff that you do with it, which is fantastic. Me too. I, I just, you know, my wife, Julie is always like pulling are you getting another book? Yeah. <laughs> and this one's on trust. So let's oh. read it together. You know oh, what I cool. mean? Oh, cool. Yeah. I yeah, got yeah. Atomic yeah. Habits because you recommended it and it's yeah. outstanding. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Well, um, all right. So, so then you decided that you were going to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. And so it's not completely different because, you know, the thread of everything yeah, runs right. through. And this is the other thing. If you want to pivot, know that you know, you think that you just have this job and you're mm -hmm. doing it and whatever, right? And then it suddenly it bores you. You want to do something else. Yeah. Or, you know, for me, I worked in the theater, but I worked all backstage in the theater, you know? And so I ran mm -hmm. later when I was not an actor, couldn't act anymore. I was running slides for Holly Near. I was her projectionist up in the booth because <laughs> I knew how to do it, right? Right. And so I think that's part of cool. it is that you um, you have always these skills in your toolkit and yeah. then you machinate them up and then boom, this opportunity happened for you. So say a little bit about what you're doing now. Oh, and I was going to say, because I'm realizing that we're giving people support around making those changes. Correct. So I was realizing what I want to say something about that, too. So a lot of times people have I have noticed people have a hard time understanding how their skills adapt to new environments. Um, but to me, that's just a creative design question because there's no way that whatever skills you've been developing, even if you're in a bureaucratic job that you loathe, yeah. there are skills, micro skills and macro skills that you are fundamentally developing that can be applied in many environments. So you just, so the invitation is to unlearn what you think those are for and then yes. apply yeah. them to another possible path. So I just want to acknowledge that. that that's fantastic. I love you that. Know? So unlearn what you think they're for, and then mm -hmm. apply them to the new path. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so good. That's quotable. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, All right. Then, so yeah. then, then what happened? So what are you doing now? Like, what well, is right it? Now, well, you, you, what's so crazy, Patty, is that again, so the world feels very topsy-turvy for everyone. Yes, and right. I think it will continue. I, you know, I'm only one person. I don't have a crystal ball. I suspect no. the uncertainty. You have a the, magic eight ball and I have a sound machine and then it plays this. Woo! Yeah, people, <laughs> come on. You're excellent. You are. <laughs> So, uh, so, uh, what, what was I saying? I got, you were saying you don't have a magic ball. Um, oh, no, I can't foresee you... the future. Exactly. So I'm not saying that t t you can take it with a grain of salt, but my, my suspicion is that ambiguity and uncertainty and volatility are part of our lay of our land. And yep. people keep saying, oh, I can't wait for the new normal. And I'm like, there's no new normal. It's not static. It's going to keep changing on you. Yeah. So. I went just like everybody else in the beginning of the pandemic, I scrambled to figure out what, how to apply my skills in a different environment, online environment. Yes, and so yes. we all learned online facilitation as quickly as we could. And I, but I was going to use it for doing like writing, a, a, writing workshops and things that were connected to creative contemplative writing practices, like finding yeah. your voice and so forth. 
And then, and then fast forward a few months and M Mural, the, the online collaboration software is like, can you be a doodler in residence? I'm like, what is that? And so now that's what I'm up to, but I didn't see that coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't try to know. Yes. Anymore. But you do accept the opportunity, mm -hmm. which is, I think, um, the secret to being able to pivot is that an opportunity sure. will arise and you may not realize yes. or recognize yes. that you're looking for an opportunity. But let me just say this, you're good if you're this. broke and mm -hmm. you need work, mm -hmm. that's when you're starting to ask for the opportunity, but it's yeah. not in the way that you think, which mm -hmm. is we sometimes think, oh, now I'm going to go online and I'm going to apply for a job. In fact, it's relationships that create mm -hmm. the connections that create the next step. The and if you can, you know, being a doodler, you understand the, the importance of visioning using mm -hmm. a visual format because oh, it helps yeah. you. It helps oh, you to, to know what's, what's all messy inside, put it oh, out there God, and then yes. figure out, okay, I don't want that mess, but I sure would like something that looks like this mm -hmm. and feels like this. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. then, then things start to happen. Right. I think the imagination and the visualization of what you can imagine is, and this is actually not my belief. This is just, uh, th there's evidence to support this, that um, you're playing with a field of energy. All of us are yeah. energy yeah. that's in, in tactical, physical form and energy that is about to become into form and energy that is formless. We're all like Jedi's like with our lightsabers and different um, levels of mastery playing with the field period. There's no getting around that. And so the question is, what are you receptive to amenable to? What are you putting into the field? Because you're going to get feedback from that energy. You're going to get feedback. So are you paying attention to the feedback you're getting? Can you move and change according to the, the information coming? You know, that to me is like being alive. That's really being alive when you're yeah. like, I'm scared but I got a signal and the signal, it has some information that I think I need to use. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to do a little experiment. It doesn't have to be all in. You don't have to like sell your house and get a sailboat in like a day. You <laughs> or I mean? you don't have to go and create an in, in, uh, a whole website for something. Exactly. You can test things first. Test them. Yes. You and know, and test the water. See if you actually oh my God. like what you think you got as a message. Do you yeah. like it? Is it right for you? Yes. Well, I love this, what you're talking about with the energy field, because, you know, uh, my friend Don calls this spinning the universe that you spin mm. the universe on your behalf. And mm -hmm. what you're doing is actually working with the energy field in mm -hmm. order and, and testing things. That's yeah. what design thinking is all about, right? That you come up with an idea, you figure out if you have a customer and who is the customer, from yeah. whatever the idea you have, then you come up with and brainstorm with a product or a process or a consulting practice or coaching or whatever whatever it is that you want to do or, you know, sports innovation. And then you test it, you yeah. test it to see right. if a, anybody likes it, B yeah. it's something that you like, right. do you want to do that for the, <laughs> for the next, you know, year, two years, whatever it is, right. I know. Lifetime, I, feel, right? I know. I feel like, so what I call cognitive rigidity, meaning like, um, an unwillingness to determine if something um, else is possible or an unwillingness to ask a question or an unwillingness to be wrong or make a mistake. It, if I was going to say, is there a fatal flaw in a, a, a human life, it would be the cognitive rigidity because uh, you might as well, uh, you're going to stay, you, there's no staying the same size. There's only just shrinking or, or growing or expanding. That's right. yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no static. So if you're yeah. not open to new experiences, new ideas, new possibilities, if you're not willing to put a foot in the little arena, then you're going to get what you're, what you're creating period. There's yeah, no, yeah, nobody, right. nobody, there's nothing that falls from heaven and says like, Oh, I know that you've been longing for this, this opportunity. You have to meet it halfway. You have to play in the space and, and yes, you will get your ass kicked. I mean, I, do you know how many times my ass has been kicked <laughs> by the universe? <laughs> I am consistently ass kickery all up and down and, but it makes me strong and it makes me feel confident and it makes me feel courageous and it, and it gives other people ideas. And then I meet people like you and then I get this just like this feedback. And so, uh, I just, my, my heart goes out to people that are too scared to try 
or have been conditioned by their lives and their parents and society to not um, take risks because they don't feel safe because I'm not blaming or judging them. I understand that. I understand that mind state. And I would just encourage you to just kick the fucking door open. Seriously. That's and, um, and so part of what I'm just listening to right now is that it's essential for you to take risks. If you want to create any kind of change, you yeah. have to go out on a limb and you have to risk doing something differently. And it's scary, and it is. but you can do it. You can do it. And you that is really it. like the biggest tip is, you yeah. know, one, get something that you think would be fun to do, you know, get an idea about something mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. test it and try it. And, um, but pay attention to mm-hmm. you and everything around you mm-hmm. so that you are in alignment with what is true for you. What yeah. is truth? You yeah. can't dumb down, you know, or push down the fear about what yeah. you're doing. You have to step mm-hmm. into it and mm-hmm. go through it. That is the place yeah. to, to be in a, um, I think standing in your own power, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And I was thinking about this, um, Dan Sullivan, he said, personal confidence comes from making progress towards goals that are far bigger than your present, far bigger than your present. Mm -hmm. And for Mm -hmm. some people, those far bigger goals might be just a little tiny thing for you to do something different. Yeah, right. That's right. There was like in that book um, by Bill Burnett, it's about, um, Oh God, it's not called designing your life. I think it might be called designing yeah, yeah, your life. It is. He it talks is. about micro experiments toward the goal. So like small hurdles, because yes. it's, it can be daunting to have, you know, like if you say, I want to be a published writer, yeah. it's like, yeah. that is too big of a, I mean, I like the goal. It's a North star, yes. but I, there's, there's a million little tiny goals on the way to that, that we have to be committed to showing up for. Um, so that yeah, we can- and he, um, Bill Burnett talks about easy change and hard change, you uh-huh. know, so those are like easy change that you mm-hmm. can make. Those are the mm-hmm. things that we do all the time, but mm-hmm. you have to consistently do things that are hard too, so mm-hmm. that you get used to it mm-hmm. so that you can, um, feel like, oh yeah, this feels hard. Oh, this is one of those hard changes. Huh. Yeah. That means I'm going to have to step back and I'm going to have <sighs> to reflect and I'm going to have to use every, um, technique that I know, you know, yeah. every sitting practice that I yeah. use any meditation right. to mm-hmm. try to get information. And even then, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll want to make the record skip. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I want to skip over it. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do this. I just want to <laughs> skip to the end. Can we get I to know. the next song? And you I know, know. the universe will be like, no, no. I think yeah, you'll, really- yeah. You got to get this girl because deeply embedded in this is your self-esteem issue or how you like to boss people around, you know? Right. And so you got to go in there. (laughs) You got to, got to dig that up too. So, yeah. And the thing is doing that makes you more effective in whatever function you're actually going to lean into so that there's a reason why those things come up. They're actually to support you when you actually lean into and start to get very, um, there's a concept called burnishing. So like, you know, we come with all this like, um, piece of coal, piece piece of coal. Yeah. It's like, we're gold. Right. But there's like coal on the outside of it or yeah. It's a diamond. You got to get down to the diamond. Yeah. Yeah, It's a diamond. So uh, you, you got to shine it and polish it. Right. And so, and you cannot skip the step. Right. Cause you, (laughs) there's, that's not, it defies the laws of physics if you do that. And so you have to lean into the, like the resonant of the system and, and trust that the lessons you get are required for you to grow into something. I love that resonance of the system. So Mm -hmm. Sunny was saying earlier, you know, Mm -hmm. if you want to be a, you know, best-selling author, right. Remember you have to resonate with that system. Mm -hmm. And that means you have to do all the things to make you a good writer understand mm-hmm. what needs to go into a book so it can be best selling because yeah. it's not easy. And plus you got to be a PR person on top of all yeah. of that. There are so many other things. There's so many lightning like. strikes that yeah. have to happen for that. That's right. Lightning so that's strikes. What, I love that. That's you good. know, because when I coach uh, writers, they that's the first thing they of course that they we all want like a New York Times bestseller. And I <laughs> I, I very regularly tell them a paradoxical thing. I'll say like I want that for you. And I'm delighted that you want that. And the, and the truth is that 
the probability of that is low. So it's a weird goal because it's fundamentally, um, um, fundamentally discouraging in a way. Yes. And, and it, it's, it's not an indication of the quality of your book because the marketplace for books is not about, this is actually the best book that there is. No, machinery. It's about a tipping point. It's, it's really a tipping point in the system. And so yes, you could and, be and a trending thing. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. If you that's post right. something and you think I want that to yeah, become viral. And then I right. say, it's like, that's not, yeah, I can't tell you how many companies I've worked with where they oh, always God. say, can you, do you think we could post this and it would be viral? And I'd be like, <laughs> No, <laughs> you're like, what no, do you think? I don't do you think put so. lightning? Yeah. Like lightning in a bottle. Okay. But the thing <laughs> is, and if you ask people, cause I know a lot of writers. And so there's people who have, have orchestrated and designed a That's bestseller right. using like SEO and algorithms and like paid functions, yes, which are, yes. that's not the same thing as being an authentic New York times bestseller. And when you ask people that have achieved that goal, they don't have any fucking idea how that happened. They're like, no. I mean, we did a couple things that would seem like that's a right. good idea. The, that's like what Bill said, you know, he was a self-published author, you know, uh -huh. so that's what happens. You, you're <laughs> yeah. self-published. It's like what and wants then, to happen. Uh -huh. And then yeah. these other things happen. And so I love that. Well, yeah. I it's love this conversation and all the pivots. And now I want to ask you, so when you um, lay awake, in bed at night and you're yeah. dreaming your dream of your future, what's it look like? What's it mm -hmm. feel like for you? What's it, what's in um, it? Yeah. And I need to draw it because actually I have a little drawing. I just pulled it out because I just drew this the other day. It's called oh, the I love it. So if you're, you're not um, seeing this because you're just listening to it, yeah. um, it will all uh, have her take a snapshot yeah. of it. Can we, and sure. put it in the show notes because that yeah. would be really great. It's like, oh, a I think so. oh no, it's kind of a secret. Yeah. It's too, too many, <laughs> too much personal stuff. It's Never too, mind. Well, but anyway, it, what it is, is it says, something in the center it's gathering. got something in the center and the gathering in the center and then all these other cool things around the outside yeah it's like a little hub and spoke uh, info doodle but yeah. um but what i i there is a dream there and i need to draw it because i have drawn some sketches but i think i need to be real specific about it i know better and i need to be real specific and actually patty I why do you want to be real specific why are you telling people or telling yourself you need to be real specific Say, um, say more. You know, I think I need to be as specific as I can, knowing that there's there's play, like there's play that I don't, you know, um, control. But I think the more specific that I am, the more I'm increasing the probability of those particular pieces coming into fruition. That said, it is a participatory process with the field. So yes. if I'm, if it's about me, if it's an egoic pursuit, if it's like sort of a distorted pursuit if it causes harm to others and yep. like, I'm not, you know, those variables are in the mix too. Yep. So yep. the specificity wouldn't be so that I can like determine and predict the outcome. It would just be to say in contact with the field, this is my most precise vision. And in the hopes that maybe it's um, the system responds to it, but yes. I don't, there's, yeah. there's so many things in what you said. And I just want to rewind for a second because you sure. said do no harm. Because yeah. this is part of it. You know, this is one of the spiritual laws is that mm -hmm. you want to do, do the best you can, but you Minimize also, harm. you don't want to harm anybody in the process. You're not interested in taking advantage of people in order for this to occur. If it's yeah. meant to occur, if yeah. you're supposed to have this experience, but this or something better is what I often will write on people's maps. You know, when we draw the future, I'm like this or something better. Cause we don't know. That's this is cool. what came out of your brain today, but you yeah the universe is going to take all the things that it mm -hmm. knows about you that you've put into the field from before. And it's going to mm -hmm. concoct an experience that boom, you're going to have, right? Yeah, totally. And that's why it's so beautiful and magical to be alive. Like when you really can play with really that. Is. Yeah. It's a special thing. It's not a, something to be taken for granted. And, and I want to acknowledge again, that my life is not um, charmed. I have a hell of a backstory <laughs> and a crazy ass, you know, challenges. And so it's, I'm not speaking from a place of like, everything has gone my way. That is, or not. that everything will go everything. Perfect. No. For if you follow this protocol of Sunny Brown's that X, Y, and Z is going to happen. Right. What's I can't true is 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, what's true is everybody's different. And so your process yeah. of change is different mm-hmm. for you. And this is what works for you, which I love. Yeah. And so would you just tell us um, what, um, and this is just, I want to ask you two more things before mm-hmm. we wrap up is one, mm-hmm. tell me what happens in your day. What do you do? Like, what's the a day in the life of Sunny Brown? Like, what do you oh. get up and then, then what happens? I get up and I, t- and I have three things in the morning that I'd like to do, which is meditate, walk my dogs. I, it's required. And then hypothetically exercise. <laughs> 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 it's on the calendar. So it appears that it happens. But it's <laughs> not in fact to happen. I know. Oh, so, I know. So it I- really is. It's always a push pull, <laughs> you know, with that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'll is. be watching your Instagram and you're like, I just rode 20 miles on my bike. I'm like, of course she did. Course yeah, she I know, did. but you that's know? not every day. And, you know, I know sometimes I'll like, post that for the day after, you know, I know, but you're very active and we all know that you could like, like, like if we arm wrestled, it would be a, just a disaster. I don't know me. about arm wrestling, but if we wanted to bike up a hill, I might, be, I, mean, I would be so compelled to beat you. I you couldn't stop so, myself. That's how I am. I'm, I'm, I'm competitive in that way. All right. That's so awesome. those are the three things that you do. And then what tell me what what is um what are you reading right now so that people oh, can God, know Patty, what, what am i not reading like yeah, okay, like so- just give three books that you're reading that you think are super cool oh ishmael is awesome which i know that you guys it's old school it's like yeah. from the 80s or 90s ishmael right? But okay. it's about the narrative of the overculture like the dominant narratives that i think is so important to be aware of yeah how yes. they tell us what to do and how to be and so i love that book and then I'm reading this thing called Brave New Work, which is like oh, yeah. about just collaborative intelligence and how to be um, with a team in a non-hierarchical way. And then, and, and then, oh, this book, um, it's just, this is like, oh, for the experience that you're coming to soon. This one's cool. Check it out. It's called the Hero, the Heroine's Journey Workbook. Oh, that's fantastic. So, Who's yeah. the author there of that book? Murdoch. Maureen okay, Murdoch. Murdoch. Maureen Murdoch. It's crazy because people are obsessed with the hero's journey, but there is a heroine's journey. Oh, as yeah. Well. And it's very different. It's different. Let's just be clear. Very different. Yeah. yeah. That's uh-huh. fantastic. Yeah. And also, I was reading um, about uh, Gene Wilder. I'm reading his memoir. I love Gene Wilder. <laughs> Who doesn't like? I really mean, like walk- that guy was so amazing. God, he was a comedian, married thing. to the funniest person in the world. I know, like my Gilda total, Ratner. total. Oh yeah. my God, she oh, was God. just so amazing. I did yes. so many send ups of her. I played her in so many different Halloween parties. You know. You oh, you imagine. did. Oh yeah, yeah, always. I <laughs> the, love that. Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana. So um, <gasps> that that wasn't really the name though. Was it was something like that? I think it is. Anyway, it um, is. yeah. So. But here's the thing. We have Mm. to wrap up, but I think Mm. you are so amazing. Do you see everybody what I was talking about when I said at the very beginning, she's super smart. You are so (laughs) smart and you're so deep. And those two things in combination, they make you just a pleasure to be with. So I feel like I got to sit and have coffee. I hope everybody that's listening, didn't you feel like you got to see and be with Sunny Brown? This is who she is. And she's (laughs) amazing. You're freaking amazing. And I love you. I love everything that you do in the world. And those are such great tips on change. People are going to love them. And so um, I'll put some show notes in about how you can connect with her on Instagram if you want to follower and keep cool. up with her, you know, notice, cause she, she posts deep things, you know, mm-hmm. I post salesy things sometimes and I'm doing <laughs> this or that, but hers are you're probably more it. successful. Good. Good. <laughs> hers are good. I don't know about that, <laughs> but I just think that I love everything that you're up to. So thank you so thank much you. for taking the time today. It was oh, so I love you. amazing to be with you and everybody. If you like what you heard and you want to hear more, you know, forward this to your friends so that they can get to know Sunny Brown too and me. And then just, yeah. if you, if you do like it and you like it a lot, write a review because that always helps our, um, where we are in yeah. the standings of the universe, right? It's right. <laughs> The universe is reading our reviews. It is the universe. It (laughs) notates all this stuff in the energy field. So we got to throw that out there. Anyway, viral. What are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) All right. I love you. And so everybody else go out and be your best self out in the world today. And until Mm -hmm. next time up your creative genius, right? Yes. Word. Awesome.